Second thumbnail, starting from scratch, and here we are with the gray background again. I'm gonna lay down some random shapes and see what comes out of it. <clears throat> I kind of like that mountainous shape. Kind of reminds me of the study, and I think I'm gonna try to uh, really apply what I learned from that. See, I, I, I liked what the shape had, but I kind of modify it and lay down some more strokes and see what I can get that will work with it. It's taken me a little bit longer to find something that I like. I think I like this one. I'm gonna flatten it and uh, cut out a solid shape from the background again so I don't have to worry about the opacity. Flatten them together. Lay down some atmosphere and establish some distance. You notice I've locked the opacity on that layer too, so I don't have to worry about painting outside like I did in the study. I'm rubbing this or uh, smudging the shape up. Now I'm pulling a lot from what I learned from the study into this one. I'm going to see kind of what I learned from it and uh, kind of use the same characteristics that I used in the study or that I gathered from the study and apply them from what I learned. Establish a nice little river that leads into the picture or into the landscape. Now I got the landscape kind of in the direction I like, but I want to establish the lighting here, give it a little bit more mood. Maybe it's a little bit more mountainous and then having the slopes lead down into the river. I had uh, some light direction on that mountain back there. Keep it from being too flat. And adding a little reflection to the riv river since the light will reflect directly down from what uh, the spot of the sun. Creates a nice little uh, highlight or uh, visual interest on that spot of the painting.
You can see I'm drawing from the S shape composition. It starts from the lower left and it sloops right and to the left and then up over those mountains and it kind of swoops back into the painting again. It's a really popular composition a lot of people use. You can see I'm uh, adding a little bit more depth to those back mountains. Again, just like the study, I'm applying what I learned. Drop the opacity and then flatten it back down onto those ground planes. It's also good to remember to flip your, your image so you can see how the composition is shaping out in both directions. You can catch some mistakes if you flip it around. And it also mixes, uh, this helps change, the, keep the image fresh in your eyes, changing it around. Adding a little bit more shape to the mid-ground hill there. And the light fold over the top of it. Give a little more definition, a little bit more character into the sky up there. Really dramatic clouds. It's all, all of this is still really loose, but it's definitely giving me some good ideas. I'm liking this thumbnail a lot more than the last one. I, I could take this, this one definitely into some interesting directions. Add a little uh, variation in the river so it's not so flat on the sides. I want to get some good variation, good depth. Here I'm trying to match up the kind of the characteristic of the mountains throughout the painting. Noticing that back one of them's a little too flat. No, it's off in the distance, but I want to give these mountains some epic size. Mix it up a little in this area. It's uh, way too flat. I'm thinking that this area right here might be a good spot for a visual cue like some sort of temple or castle might be fun to put right there create a nice open space on the third of the image try to put in some trees in here really quick Probably going to warp this a little bit. Yeah, just uh, go with the contour of the, the mountain and uh, smudge it a little bit. No, well, I guess I'm just going to erase a little, little away with it. And I keep up the, the energy and the speed of it. Keep going, keep moving. I'm not worrying too much about these trees. People will be able to look at it and read right away that it's not just uh, flat plains or rock faces there. There's actually some plant life there. And I can definitely push that with the color as well. I'm pretty happy with this. I think I'm going to move on to color here pretty soon. And now, uh, 
adjust the levels, see if I can make it a little bit more dramatic. I put a layer mask in there and I'm going to paint into the mask and bring out some of the dark shapes so I can keep the details that I already established but with just a little bit darker on the levels. Once I got the area, the, the shadow of that mountain established, I can uh, reduce the opacity and flatten it down again. So yeah, I can paint in dark areas without losing any of the detail that I that I got before. And I'm just sculpting away with that lasso tool again. I really like those hard edges that it has. And here we go with the colors. Start with the ground plane. Make it very lush, green. Give this guy some blue, some uh, blue-gray haze. And give the mountain some uh, atmosphere, some depth. Use that fade option again. I'm going to flatten all the layers because I'm pretty happy with the results. I'm uh, going to paint in some color for that river so it doesn't look too green. I want it to stand out from the, the plant life and the environment. Put some uh, fog in here and just to show that there's uh, some haze, some distance, some low, low flying clouds. And like I established in the study image, uh, the foreground elements are a lot more colorful, vibrant. So I'm going to throw in some more color and noise and contrast up here in the foreground. Just to mix it up a bit. Just to slavish that foreground, foreground element. I didn't like how that river was leading the eye out of the image, so I was gonna so I put some the foreground element to kind of block the eye and swoop it back up into the image. Kind of frame the image with the, the plant life there. And I'm gonna adjust the color balance again just to kind of unify the whole image with the broad changes and play with the levels as well. Well, I'm pretty happy. 